Hey there everyone, for this video I'm just going to be reviewing episode 22 of Attack on Titan the final season. This episode has some of the best Sakuga animations of the final season as a whole. Like this has some amazing hand-drawn Odium Gear Sakuga, also has some awesome effects animation, Satoshi Sakai back at it again. But unfortunately, <laughs> what a surprise, the composite does not hold up. And the composite just actively makes the animation worse in some segments. In other segments, it just stays like a base level. It doesn't do anything to improve the animation, but it doesn't actively make it worse. While in other cases, it just actively ruins the animation. This season so far has had some high points with compositing, especially with episode 19. Episode 19 is what I'd consider the, visually the most impressive episode so far in the final season. And I think it will be. Like, I don't see them doing something better than episode 19. Like, episode 19 was pretty much perfect. It had a lot of good 2D animation, and the composite was keeping up. Let's just say that. Anyway, let's get into the video. First segment I'm going to talk about is this, Gabi's conversation with Reiner. While the animation is nothing spectacular, I love the level of detail that they're putting into these characters. It's been consistent for the entire season. Character designs are extremely detailed with Attack on Titan the final season. They, they were way more detailed than when Witch Studios were working on it. Makes sense. I don't really think the character designs that Witch Studios had are inferior. They were good in their own regard. But if detailing is the one thing that you're looking at, then this just beats Witch Studios every day of the week. It just looks very well detailed. There's a lot of excessive level of shading here. I bet the Genga for the scene was amazing. The eye shades, of course, they, they do that a bit excessively if you ask me for the final season like even scenes that don't need it have eye shades but here eye shades are kind of necessary and they just make it even more intense and close up with eyes always great eyes eye designs are again something that have been amazing from the very start of attack on titan even when witch studios was doing it and it remains consistent here the eye shades are great the eye design itself also great but the composite is kind of making it look worse like i wish like this whole episode is entirely brown, right? Everything in this episode is brown. And just Gabi is also brown. Hey, that's that's a pun. But Gab Gabi's eyes, they are brown in color, so there's like zero contrast here, which kind of makes the makes her eyes not pop out much. Eyes always need to pop out. Otherwise they don't look very good. The storyboards for this episode are amazing. This is one easy example for that. The shot looks absolutely stunning. It looks so incredible. Like with Eren's Titan, founding Titan in the very back there and all the Titans swarming around him, following him. The shot is just incredible. Unfortunately, again, the composite is just pretty much brown. There's a lot of detail that is lost in this foreground illustration. It's not really a foreground, it's still a background. They just have a super background, a background, and then the characters in the front, which is like Mikasa and Armin in the corner here. But like you, there is trees down here. Do you even see the trees down there? Like, no, they're just lost in the composite. They don't even look green. They just look black in color because the composite is so brown and the brown is mixing with the green and making it look kind of black. It just doesn't look good. And that's something that remains consistent throughout this episode. The composite not doing much for this episode at all. But this shot, with better colors, it would be wallpaper worthy. It looks amazing. Actually, even just this shot, it's pretty fucking good. Really good. The art direction this season has been very good. Next scene I'm going to talk about is the Browse family getting chased. Again, this composite is just bad. That is just the easiest way to put it. It's just not good. The scene was animated by a young animator named Semi-Automatic, probably a webgen animator. That's right, his name is, that's his name, Semi-Automatic. It's the pen name that he uses for animation. Kind of goofy name, but a skill. It's, it's, he's the real deal. He animated a few cuts in Osama Ranking. That's the first time I saw or heard of him. And yeah, they were really cool cuts. And in this show, it still holds up. They're very cool cuts. And also the Odium Gear scene that comes later on, which is like the best Odium Gear scene in the entirety of the final season, also animated by him. So here, the reason I say that the scene is just not good is because, look at it, it's just not good. There is such an excessively high amount of bloom coming from behind Niall's Titan here that it just 
makes the foreground, the front portion of the shot look extraordinarily dark. It doesn't need to be this dark. Yes, they are in a dark alleyway, but it does not need to be about realism. If I had to choose between loss of detail and realism, wait, what? If I had to sacrifice detail for realism in anime, then I just wouldn't do it because detail is the most important. And there's a lot of detail that's being lost here. Well, maybe not here because here it's just that the colors are bad. But in the next shot with the Niles close up, you can really see the loss of detail that I'm talking about. His eye shades completely gone. Like the under part of his nose, you barely can see what's up. The insides of his mouth, they're drawn to the last very little inch intricate detail, but you can barely see what's inside his mouth. It's just black. If you look very closely, you can somewhat see that, yeah, there, there is multiple layer of shadows inside his mouth, but it's just barely visible because of how dark it is. The composite, not good. Like, I don't know why you would do this. There's clearly such a high amount of effort put into the shot, but the composite just actively ruins it. It's like finding an extremely hot girlfriend only for her to then finger you in the butthole. Just completely pointless, ruins the experience. The shot with, where Kaya gets bonked, however, it's very good. Like that tumble is so realistic. It looks really well animated. It almost looks like it's rotoscoped. It looks like they, <laughs> it just makes it look like director Hayashi just picked up an actual kid and threw her down a flight of stairs to use her as a rotoscoping reference. I hope they didn't actually do that. But as I said before, this is just the an that same animator, semi-automatic animating, and it's really good. And the composite here also holds up, not the textures or colors, but composite in terms of layering. Because Kaya is, the way she's falling down a flight of stairs here, this background, it's not an animated background. It's just an illustration. It's just a flat illustration of stairs that's made to look like this because it's just a very good illustration. So you get depth on top of it. And then a foreground animated character is just tumbling down, going just tumbling down the stairs. And it looks like they're actually interacting. Maybe because of the shadows, you can see that Kaya's shadow is perfectly visible every step when she's falling down. And just the way she's interacting with the stairs, it's very pleasing to the eye. Just the animation, not the kid brutally falling downstairs. That's, there's nothing fun about that. But yeah, especially at the end there, the way her face just squishes to the ground, right here. Like her face hits the ground, just gets squished basically, and then her hair falls over her head. It, it's eerily realistic. I wonder where Semi-Automatic got a reference for this from. Maybe he didn't even use reference. Maybe he just animated it just from pure imagination, which would be crazy. But yeah, extremely talented animators just pop out of nowhere, man. It's crazy now. Again, the scene where Nile just slams into here. A lot of detail just lost because of just how dark the shot looks. And now we're getting to the worst composited portion of this entire episode. This is just, it's just sad to watch, really. It's just, I don't, I don't like it. It's just so bad. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So Gabi shoots the gun. And this is the foreground. This is Niles Titan. It's a very well drawn image, really good drawing. Um, but you can already see it's quite a bit blurred out. So the region here, which has line work, you can barely see it. Of course, not getting to see every little bit of line work. It's not such a big deal, but still it's kind of sad that you're losing line work, but that's not it. This entire scene is about to get completely blurred out. As you can see here, this is the impact scene. The bullet is hitting, or the bullet, like more like a cannon shell, but it's hitting Niles Titan here, and you can barely make out what's happening. There's such an unnecessarily high amount of motion blur here. This is fucking terrible. Like, let's look at what this shot has. It has effects animation, which is the beam that is going through Nile, and then over here, there's wind animation, like a force kind of animation, because to just show how heavy the impact was and there, there are also beautiful blood animation probably animated by satoshi sakai or whichever freelance animator did this kind of actually looks like satoshi sakai right probably is sakai so all of that just fucking gone because the director of photography just decided to put a fucking blur filter on top of it for no reason this is just so bad it's a very well drawn image it's understandable when you're doing this on top of cgi titans 
like a lot of complaints from the previous season, especially episode one, when Reiner is blocking Zeke's Titan, is when there's a lot of good smoke animation, but all of it is blurred out because of motion blur. There it makes sense because they're not trying to blur out the smoke. They're trying to blur out Reiner's Titan, which is a CGI model. So they're trying to hide the CGI move movement. There are other ways to depict motion in CGI. You can add smear frames with CGI, but that's an extremely difficult procedure. I've only really seen it three or four times. And the best example is obviously Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where they make the CGI look as close to 2D as possible. But obviously that took an incredible amount of work and time. So here it makes sense that they use blur to hide CGI titans. But this is a 2D titan. An animator had to work his ass off at a minimum wage to just draw this scene really well, frame by frame, only for the director to photo of photography to just completely blur the shit out. Which, it's just infuriating. It's just, it's like, it's like someone putting in an enormous amount of work to diet down to 12% body fat and now you can see visible abs, only to then put a permanent tattoo of Yelena's face on top of your abdomen. Actually, that's not a really fair example because this actually looks good, whereas this looks like dog shit. I really did not like that. And if you're wondering, if you're probably thinking, oh, it's just a bullet passing really fast, they need to add motion blur. No, because for the very next scene, we see that same beam of light, which is supposed to be the bullet. We see the impact, the way it impacts with just the stairs. And there's a rubble animation with absolutely no blur whatsoever. It's like the director of photography changed for that particular scene. In motion, this is what it looks like. That scene looks great because there's no blur, but the scene that came right before that, in motion you can barely make out what's going on. You see, you can make out what's going on just based on one image, and that is the one unblurred image of just Niles Titan missing half of its face because of the impact of the bullet. But just showing the impact itself would have made the scene look so much better. Here, thankfully, again, I guess the director of photography just got hit in the fucking head and he was like, oh my God. So this is how you do compositing. And this decided to do just good compositing, at least not actively ruining the person's work. And the animator who worked on this really good job, you can see like the glowing effect now. It's glowing inside Niall's throat. And just fucking explosion here looks so sick. The smoke coming off from behind Niles, pretty much his nape, right? The explosion animation and the blood effects that's just splattering out. It looks amazing. And all of these frames look si sick. This is probably my favorite cut from this entire episode. Yes, the cut that comes with um, semi-automatic that he does with ODM gear animation, also very good. But this is my favorite cut from this episode. Just really solid, good looking effects animation. When Gabi makes the jump, her hair animation is also pretty good. This entire scene is very well animated. Yeah, that just looks sick. The blood animation probably done by Satoshi Sakai. And yeah, this is just wallpaper worthy. This is what the show would look like if the composite was not actively ruining the animator's work. You can see all of the de detail that you wanna see here. And the blood animation that comes right after this, this cut, it's probably the best blood animation I've ever seen in my life. That is so sick. That is just so good. I'm sure that's animated by Satoshi Sakai. Like, who else is I'm gonna animate effects that are that complicated in Attack on Titan? This is also kind of sad because most people won't even notice this amazing blood animation. Most people are just focused on Kaya in this scene. And yeah, and in general, most people just don't give a shit about blood animation. Like, with affordable Demon Slayer season 2. There's a lot of scenes with really bad CGI blood, but affordable is being praised as like the best animation studio and Demon Slayer is being praised as the best animation of all time. Even though the CGI blood and CGI effects with the sparks and stuff, it doesn't look very good. People don't care about 2D effects and it's kind of sad because the 2D effects here, really absolutely incredible. Next scene we're talking about is this one. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest, when Barricades started playing, I came a little bit, I had to pause and then change underwear when I was watching it. I'm glad I wasn't shooting the reaction for that one. But again, you can see here just brown colors thrown everywhere. But 
the switch from this illustrated tower to then a CGI rotation shot of the tower looks absolutely amazing. This is an amazing rotation shot. And if you didn't, probably, you probably didn't even notice this. There, even the foreground changes to CGI. All of these foreground scouts, they are CGI. So only John, Mikasa and Armin are in 2D and even Armin looks somewhat 3D. Right? Even Armin looks like he's 3D here, but he's just drawn in a way to look 3D so that when the 3D models actually come in, they look natural. I guess that's what they're doing. But <laughs> that, is, that is the same CGI model that they used for Corny in episode 6 of the first part. And they're reusing that model here, even though Corny is not even supposed to be here. Corny is supposed to just go down south, going to feed. He's going to force his mom to eat a 13 year old. So he's not supposed to be here, but this is just Corny's model. And look at that. That is John's model that comes right after Corny's model. And John already jumped. But yeah, uh, in motion, you will not even notice that. Like, yeah, I can't, I did not even see that, right? Yeah, it just goes by so fast that you won't even see the faces of the models. You can't tell. Wait a minute. That is Corny's model from the previous season, episode 6. It's impossible to make it out. It's almost not even... I didn't even notice that it was CGI when I was watching it for the first time. I was just going by the sequence frame by frame the second time I was watching it. And that's when I could tell that it's actually CGI foreground models. And here it is. Pure another... Pure unadulterated Sakuga by Semi Automatic. It's so cool. It's so nostalgic seeing this kind of moment in Attack on Titan. This it's kind of what one of the things that about Attack on Titan that I absolutely loved from the very beginning. And yeah, it, I I miss this. Really miss this. And this actually looks like Yasuyuki Ibarra uh, inspired I mean, animation. It's not. It's less of Imai inspiration, definitely more of Ibarra inspiration in this one. Reminds me of um, Eren's and Mikasa's movement towards the boulder um, in season one. Of course, that was way more impressive. Kind of does not make sense comparing a young animator like Semi-Automatic to a veteran like Yasuki Ibarra, who is an absolutely incredible animator. But still, just the fact that I'm making that compar comparison is just high praise for semi-automatic and good job dude you animated like a fucking incredible scene and the smears used here also really good i really like the smears of course there are blur frames thrown in there for no reason again of course there needs to be but the smoke animation is great um the smears on the wiring also very good but take a guess as to what i'm gonna say negatively about the scene that's right the composite the background model here does not look bad. Like this is good CGI background animation. The problem I has is the comp compositing and the photography in general. The way the shot, scene is shot just doesn't look good. The camera is moving around a bit too much. I don't want that. With 2D foreground and CGI backgrounds, I just want the camera to always follow the foreground. That's all you need to do. You don't have to fucking shake the camera violently. Unfortunately, the director of photography here just, I guess, wanted to do this, shake the camera violently. You might be thinking the way the sh they're shaking the camera is for the purpose of keeping the background consistent with the foreground. Which might be the goal, but they did a horrible job at it. If you look at this, the shot. So his anchor is attached to the sky here. This is where his anchor is attached. That is like literal nothingness. His anchor is not attached to anything. And that is a foreground model. So it just keeps moving forward like that. It's attached to nothingness. And it just moves like that. And it's very noticeable even in motion. That the anchor is not attaching to anything. And there he's supposed to kick off the building. Here, as you can see, he's supposed to kick off that building and he's moving forward, but it does not look like he's kicking off that building at all. It just looks like there's a lot of space between him and the building, probably because there are no shadows on the building. Maybe that's why, but it's just very disorienting the way this is shot. Again, here, look at the bottom right guy. His anchor is attached to the sky again, and it's <laughs> the anchor is just fucking moving forward. It's like 
the Spider-Man games from the early 2000s where the web is just attaching to the sky and you just web up the sky. I mean, why am I taking the example of the old Spider-Man game? Let's just take the example of the new terrible fucking uh, Marvel Avengers game where, again, the Spider-Man's web is just attached to the sky. But yeah, <laughs> that's what this looks like. Just bad compositing. Just the background just not remaining consistent with the foreground. Again, if they had more time, I'm sure they would do a better job with this, but time is something that they just don't have. But overall, how does the scene look? Still one of the best scenes of the final season. Really is. Extremely good foreground animation by the guy named Semi-Automatic. I, I wonder how old he is because I'm sure he's younger than me. This inconsistency with the... Look at the wires here. Like, where are the wires even going? extremely inconsistent with the background but this also reminds me of Ver Creek's scene in um, the fine first season not the first season the final season part one episode eight which is another scene scene another episode that looks very good that is another sequence with extremely good ODM gear animation and there I'll show you I'll put the scene up here and you'll be able to see that the anchor again is not attaching to anything it looks awkward it's just not very well composited and again, as I used the example of him kicking off the building, just does not look like him kicking off the building. But this is something that Bit Studios did an incredible job at being consistent with. Because the way Arifumi Imai structured the sequences, it was not Witch Studios because they are really not doing anything. It was just Arifumi Imai, a freelancer, animating the foreground and then drawing rough backgrounds as illustrations for the CGI team which is again not in Witch Studios, it's Studio Madbox, a completely different studio. And then they model the background according to Arifumi Imai's foreground animation, and then they give it back to Arifumi Imai, who then just makes the Genga, and then it's just given to the compositing artist. Ultimately, what is Witch Studios doing? They're just organizing the whole thing, that's it. It's like someone hosting a multiplayer server and everyone going, wow, you did an amazing job with this video game. No, you're not doing it anything with this video game you're just hosting a server you're not making the video game and yeah similar situation with mappa here i don't know if the cgi or the uh, compositing is done in-house but they have done compositing in-house and just fucking sucked but mappa is opening a cgi studio so hey that's actually a very good thing hopefully that'll improve their cgi and compositing they're following Ufortable's path here though in the case of Ufortable, everything is done in one building but even here, since they're organizing within MAPPA, even though it's far away, since most stuff is done digitally anyway, they're just going to have a better coordination and teamwork. So very hopeful for MAPPA's future projects, especially with something like Chainsaw Man, where there's going to be a lot of 3D and 2D mixing, like um, Denji's chainsaw form, his head is going to be CGI and his body is going to be 2D. That's a very complicated level of CGI and 2D mixing, which requires a lot of coordination and again they're just blurring frames even though it's good 2d animation some of the frames are blurred it's a, 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 there's also the idea of personal preference coming into this because this is everything that i hate in a video game that's what the director of photography is doing um when i play doom eternal the first thing i could do is just go to the video settings i disable motion blur I disable bloom and any fucking bit of chromatic aberration and film grain and I disable environmental screen shake. That's everything that I disable as soon as I get into the game. This has motion blur, this has environmental screen shake with the way the screen is just violently shaking with respect to the background. This has motion blur, this has everything that I hate about video games. But of course, it's completely different. But the way the motion blur is integrated here is the way the motion blur is integrated in video games it's just a post effect that's just lowering detail and in this case again it, the way the motion blur is integrated it is just a post effect that does nothing but lower the detail and i'm not fond of it this scene however the compositing is average it doesn't ruin the animation and it actually looks kind of sick like the glossy effect here it's really good now blurring this shot makes sense because there's very little movement in these keyframes, very little smearing. It's not very well-drawn keyframes because you can see the way Mikasa is moving, it's, it's quite stiff. There's not much smearing, not much squashing. Really the only thing that showing motion blur 
in the form of spears is her sword here and the wind animation but other than that which might be a post digital effect let me see no 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 those are hand drawn smears for the swords i'm i'm pretty sure but other than that mikasa's character itself has very little smearing on it so since there's very little smearing on it since the keyframes are not all that good it makes sense to use motion blur to depict motion ufotable this is a lot people praise ufotable's animation a lot because they say ufotable's animation is good because the characters are always staying on model which is just actually not a good thing that is a bad thing that the characters are always staying on model that's poor animation technique that they're not using smears or stretching or squashing but because the characters are remaining on model they actually use a good amount of motion blur to hide the fact that they are using stiff character designs and of course when actually good animators are animating for them like when Masaki Kunihiro or Nozomu Abe are animating the characters are usually very smeared especially when Masaki Kunihiro is animating like I'll put an example screenshot up here you might look at that and going wait what the fuck is that that is Akaza that is Akaza's entire body that is just smeared the fuck up. And when Nozomu Abe is animating, what the fuck is that? That is Zenitsu. That is Zenitsu's entire body. It's just a smeary mess because they're moving so fast and it's not bad animation because they're smeared. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's good animation. Here, because the characters are remaining on model and not many smears at all, it makes sense that they're using motion blur. I really like this close-up shot of Mikasa almost like giving a fish eye effect because of how close she is to the camera and then these pretty cool cross flares that i think are digital these are not hand drawn cross flares and the cross flares then transition to become the blades smears which is just super cool again a lot of blur here but it makes sense because as i said there's literally no smears on mikasa's model here so they're using motion blur to hide that the key animation is not all that good, but the effects animation, amazing. Probably Satoshi Sakai again, especially for this cut. That is the way the blood is just gushing out. It's amazing effects animation. The last scene I'm gonna talk about is pretty much an illustration, but this is just extremely high detail. This is so well drawn. Everything here is just so well drawn. Like the clothing, the way it's wrinkled because you can tell that this is wet clothes because of how wrinkled it looks and Annie's exhaustion perfectly shown with her um, expression her hair so much detail in her hair the shards of ice at the sides the liquid all over her body it looks very nice I, I don't think I've ever seen this level of detailed foreground drawing ever with which studios attack on titan this is just super high level of detail for her entire body the hair the clothing it's all amazing and this is the last thing that i'm going to talk about i was supposed to talk about this earlier but i missed it wow this has to be the best background in attack on titan this is so fucking good the way it's storyboarded it is incredible if you look at the very super background here you see the titans they're hidden by smoke but you see an entire silhouette of the marching titans here so good it looks incredible like the foreground here if it was removed then it would look even better if it was just this background i want to look what the illustration looks like because this is some extremely beautiful illustrations it's like a scene from porn when they're doing doggy style sex like the girl is pretty hot so the scene is pretty hot but the guy's ass cheeks are like covering a quarter of the screen so you can barely see the good stuff this is what that is like like the foreground models here they're not very good the titans look really poorly drawn um, they also have pretty thick line work so they become very conspicuous i wish they had thinner line work so they are barely noticeable they're just at proper silhouettes that you don't focus on at all but here you kind of focus on the titans and you won't focus on the background whereas the background here is absolutely stunning it looks so good it, it just looks like this background is just straight ripped out of doom eternal it just looks super super impressive just an amazing background truly wallpaper worthy if this foreground didn't exist and that's about it that's the entire episode so how would i rank this episode in terms of visuals 
not too bad. How would I rank this episode in terms of animation? <laughs> One of the best animated episodes of the entire final season. The animation is very good, but unfortunately the composite just fucking ruins some of the well animated segments like when Niall is getting shot. But otherwise a very solid episode. Even the episode that came after this, I'm, I don't think I'll make an elaborate review on that because there's very little animation in it very little movement so there's very little to talk sakuga wise but the storyboards and the backgrounds they are incredible some of the shots they're amazing the the way they're just exploiting the fact that the rumbling titans are cgi so good the way they just put them in the background add a layer of smoke on top of it and then just have them in the background it just intensifies the sequence so much more which studios tried this with um Bertolt's titan in season three part two but to but to a very low degree of success. It looked dog shit. The CGI model was bad. The way it was put in the shot was also kind of bad at times. But here they're using the CGI just amazingly. And it ultimately comes to Yuichiro Hayashi's experience with working on CGI. He's pretty experienced with CGI work at this point. He did it with Dor Dorohedoro, though Dorohedoro CGI I do think is much better than this CGI because they had way more time to work on Dorohedoro. But yeah, solid episode. The nostalgia hit super hard when Barricade started playing and the Sakuga started hitting. But yeah, overall kind of iffy compositing, but animation was great. So I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. A very good comparison to make to this episode is Demon Slayer's Yuko Kohen episode 10, where everything is just red. Even though everything is red, you're not losing any detail that the animator is putting in. Like this shot with Gyutaro, he just looks fucking menacing. Also helps the fact that Demon Slayer's character designs have extremely thick outline. So even with exaggerated bloom effects, you won't really miss any of the detail because it's so thick, right? And there's no line work as far as thin line work goes. Whereas in Attack on Titan, there's a lot of elaborate line work that with poor compositing just completely goes away. But Demon Slayer's episode 10, even though they're using like a red composite to have, give a post-apocalyptic feeling, here it just doesn't look nearly as good. Yeah, kind of disappointing, but at least we got nice Odium Gear Sakuga, so I'm kind of happy. So yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you did not like it, then leave a dislike and tell me in the comment section of how I can improve. If you really liked it and want to see more, then subscribe. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for the views.